Hello, in this video I will try to show you how I use this mini mill from Harbor Freights to cut these 0.8 module 12 tooth and 80 tooth brass gear sets with a square drive connection. In order to make this video as short as possible, I will skip most of the gear specific math and try to stick to the universal stuff. Mostly because I want to use this video to show my relatives what I've been doing all this time. I've tried to explain to them how this stuff works, but they act like if I've just been sitting around watching YouTube videos. Anyway, these gears will be used in motorized gearboxes to drive the machines that will make the tires for the wheels of my electric scooter. Oh, and while I'm whining about other people, I'd like to mention that I'm not a machinist, so you may see some shortcuts that might make professionals grind their teeth. So if you're a machinist with sensitive teeth, this is your warning. If mini milling is new to you, before you start cutting gears, you can practice by making all the jigs you'll need along the way. I don't know about you, but my mini milling machine was made with metric parts and imperial scales. So cutting your jig to a metric size is the easiest option. And to make things more complicated, the hand wheel is marked in thousandths of an inch, and one revolution is 62.5 thousandths. Therefore, you'll need to use the 1 16th of an inch ruler indicator for most of your cuts especially big ones. Remember to include fractions in your calculations to reduce your error. If a dividing head is new to you, this will be a quick explanation of how to use the dividing plate. My dividing head has a 40 to 1 turn ratio, meaning that 40 turns of the crank will rotate the chuck once. So with just the crank, I could cut 40, 20, 10, 8, 5, 4, or two teeth, because 40 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. You know, because 2 and 5 are prime numbers and can only be divided by themselves. You remember that stuff about whole numbers and prime numbers, right? So cutting every turn would give me 40 teeth. Cutting every other turn would give me 20 teeth. 40 is not divisible by 3, so every third turn would give me a headache, which is also known as 13 and a third teeth. Hopefully you get the picture. But since I am cutting 12 and 80 teeth, I will need to divide the rotation even further with a dividing plate. The dividing plate is divided equally with a specific number of holes in a circular shape. Now getting 80 teeth is easy. I only need a whole number that is divisible by 2 because 80 equals 40 times 2. Therefore, on this 15 to 20 hole dividing plate, I can use 16, 18, or 20. But 12 equals 2 times 2 times 3, so I need something divisible by 3, like 15 or 18. Okay, now that I know that this plate will work for my cutting needs, I have to figure out how many holes per division to use. To get my 12 divisions, I am going to use the 18 hole circle, and 18 times 40 equals 720 holes. So if I rotate the crank counting 720 holes, I will rotate chuck once. But I was planning to make 12 cuts, so 720 holes divided by 12 cuts equals 60 holes per cut. I can count 60 holes every time, or I could count 3 rotations plus 6 holes, because 18 holes times 3 equals 54 holes, and an additional 6 holes makes it a total of 60 holes. Also, the divider has rotating arms that can be used to measure six holes at a time. So that sounds like the way to go. Now to start cutting. Okay, the first thing I have to do is resurface the rod I am using as a blank to make sure the face is perpendicular to my cutting path and to align the rod to zero on my hand wheel. Okay, originally for this scene, I was going to play it all the way through at the regular speed, but after watching it several times, I decided uh, I'm going to use a fast forward button.
The next thing I have to do is cut a little off the rod to give me the correct outside diameter for a 12 tooth gear. And most people would do this with their lathe, but I don't have one. So I'm going to make 24 tangential cuts around the rod to approximate a circle. Why 24? Because it's twice the number of teeth I'm going to cut. I'll be using an involute cutter designed to cut into a cylindrical shape to form the proper tooth, and I need all the teeth to be the same. For example, if I had a 16-sided pizza, an 8-sided pizza, and a 4-sided pizza, and cut them into 8 slices, the 4-sided pizza slices would be irregular, the 8-sided slices might pass, but the 16-sided slices would be the most similar. It's the same thing here. Now I have to cut the square driver, which is simple enough. Then I have to center the involute cutter to the chuck using a scribe, because I have one and it fits. You could use whatever you want. After I return the rod to the chuck, I will use the involute cutter to lightly mark the center of the rod with a cross-cut guide for the hole I will drill later. The next step is to actually cut the teeth. And all that other stuff was just prep work.
And after I cut the gear piece from the rod, it's time to drill this inner hole. And with the crosscut guide, I have no excuse if my drill bit wanders. And finally, to finish the piece, I will measure the length, and with the help of a jig, I will cut it to size. One more gear to go. For the next gear, I'll be using sheet metal and a hole saw cutter to make the blanks. Don't worry, I won't be showing you that because there are several ways you could cut or buy your own blanks. But you will want a way to center the cutter. In this case, I will use a paper strip with the center marked and cut into it. The strip allows me to do the centering while the blank is in the jig. Now I just have to cut the square drive hole. I am using a square drive connection because it gives me more adjustment options over a keyway. You could think of it as a gigantic keyway and drive bar in one. After mounting it onto the adapter and clamping it into the chuck, I can begin cutting it down to the correct outside diameter using the same technique as the one I used on the 12 toothed gear. With a goal of 80 teeth, I will be making 160 cuts for the new diameter. As a reminder, just like the 80 tooth calculation, 160 cuts equals 4 times 40 cuts. So I can use the same dividing plate from before by selecting the 20 hole circle. The first cut will be the hardest since it has to remove the most material, but all the rest of the cuts will only be trimming off the difference, essentially just rounding off the shape. The final step is to cut the 80 teeth.
I hope this video was helpful to anyone who watched it.